please sum up the uh, purpose of today's meeting, this year's meeting. Yeah, the building big solar across Ohio, uh, the purpose is to explain how big solar units work because they cost less if you build a lot of solar arrays. And I think the other issue is how do we get that power to the people? Because a lot of people, including myself, <laughs> Uh, couldn't do solar because we had trees that blocked the south face or people can't do it because they rent. There's a whole variety of reasons. And so if we can get solar uh, at a cheaper cost um, available to the average consumer as well as the rooftop market, then this is another way to provide renewable energy to people who might not otherwise be able to do it. And uh, it's working very well and we're at a great location at Bowling Green because we have a very progressive municipal utility that's committed to uh, because it's run by uh, the people essentially through their government is very responsive. So you know I'm hopeful that uh, next year we're going to have the big utilities involved. We're watching very closely what American Electric Power is doing. They've made a proposal and uh, we know utilities just to the west of us uh, in Minnesota are doing 800 megawatts which is twice as much as AEP is proposing in a smaller state of Minnesota. And so we're seeing um, on the utility grid nationally this year, uh, utilities are putting in the biggest resource is solar. And so while people say it's too expensive, the reality is it's an economic decision. That's followed by natural gas and that's followed by uh, wind. And so the, one of the reasons the coal plants are falling away is they're not economic. It's because utilities look at the world in economic terms. And so solar, because the prices have decreased so much and because the technologies are improving, like today we heard about tracking. And you heard John Whitty, one of the senior installers, saying, I never thought tracking could provide more power, but from a utility standpoint, it works very well. It kind of fills in the shoulder, so to speak, and the power curve. And so what we have is, um, you know, bigger players now that traditionally have been viewed as opposed to renewable energy uh, stepping up to the plate. And so this is a policy issue going forward. For example, the AP thing is still contingent depending on what the PUCO does. But the, the local uh, um, utilities, the co-ops that were here, you know, to me, all renewables are local. And uh, when you look at what is happening with the technology, uh, to me, it's like the buggy whip manufacturers, a few people that, want, that tried to stop the introduction of the automobile. The fact is that the solar technology is, is increasing all across the state and frankly we did an in-depth study as you reported on you know looking at state records and our own analysis of having done tours for 16 years that shows uh, that you know we have this grassroots um, growth 23 percent more installations um, we think if the freeze could be lifted on the rps ohio could be moving even faster there's still a reluctance to come into Ohio and put investment in. That's the biggest impact that the freeze has had. Because the state has frozen the right. renewable Right, and we certainly standards. support uh, lifting the freeze, putting Ohio back. It helps meet the clean power plan, which is in everybody's interest. If we'd have kept the current law, the old law in effect, that was signed in 2008, we would have easily met it. And so, you know, uh, the reality is that uh, we see big utilities all across the country and we're starting to see at least AEP, getting the message that this is an economic decision to go solar and they have big wind holdings as well. So it's, uh, you know, it's, that, that's what I see is happening. So this goes all the way up to the individual. We still believe rooftop solar is viable. It's not an either or choice, uh, but if people can't do rooftops or for one reason or the other, then we need to make it accessible to everybody. And by making it accessible, you're talking about community solar. Community solar term. is one model that seems to be catching on. Um, it, you know, the co-ops, um, it's amazing to me. This, this is one of the biggest co-op programs in the United States. When we had this conference a year ago, we had a description of one or two co-ops in Michigan. There was one or two over in Indiana. They've got virtually almost all the co-ops in Ohio because at the grassroots demand, um, of their customers, people are saying we want solar. And this is what's so tragic about this being made into a partisan issue because, you know, uh, people love solar in general is what we find and they want to do it. Is solar now cost competitive with gas? Is that what you're saying? Well, it is at the utility scale. <clears throat> in other words, when you build a 20 megawatt uh, solar field like they're doing here in Bowling Green, 
if you can put it close to the um, load center where you're going to use the solar, Bowling Green doesn't have to pay for the transmission charges. And what they basically have said today is when this comes online, your solar rates are not, your, your utility rates aren't going to go up because the solar is equivalent to the market rate that we get over the grid. Now, some people might say, well, that's a situation for Bowling Green. But the fact that you can get close to what we call grid parity in a state that has been largely viewed as cheap energy, a big coal state, uh, the reality is that, um, you know, solar, because of the declining prices of the panels, and, the, and they keep declining. It's one of the few things in America where the costs keep going down. Uh, you know, the BBC reported um, yesterday, and when the, the study they did of Ohio, that that first solar plant right here in Wood County, that uh, is in the same county as Bowling Green, can produce a solar panel every second. There was another factoid today that there's a solar panel going up everywhere in America every two and a half minutes. And so this is a growth industry. It puts people to work. It's manufactured energy. The fuel source comes up every day in the east. So once it's built, it becomes the most valuable part to the utility because they can project their loads, especially it's even better than wind because wind has more variability. Now, obviously, the sun doesn't shine at night, but if you start looking at batteries, and we had a presentation today, Ohio is big, you know, as, uh, on all these technologies that go all the way back to Thomas Edison, to Neela Park in Cleveland, and you look at, you know, our whole history as an industrial state, uh, these are technologies that can put people to work. You know, and I, I think the frustrating thing about this, listening today, is people can't see a lot of this. Even this big solar array at Bowling Green is gonna be away a couple, couple miles off, apparently from 75. You can see the wind turbines at the Whirlpool plant just down the road near Findlay. But you know, what we need to show policymakers is a map of where all these solar arrays are, all these wind turbines, all of the, the hydro, because then you show the supply chain. We're still the number one state in parts that go into wind turbines, and yet we have $2 billion of wind farms that are being held hostage. They've been certified, they've gone through the process, the legislature in kind of a, an amendment that didn't even have a public hearing, you know, changed the economics of that. And- um, That was the budget bill. That I was the budget bill, that's yeah. right. And so, you know, um, we need a map. I wish I could get some funding to do that because this map would show, you know, make this more visible. We heard a, the, the cover story. We just heard the uh, city manager of Clyde say uh, one of the problems is that people don't even see this big array, 3.66 array, I mean, huge array, because it's kind of concealed from view. Uh, we, you know, and, and that's true somewhat of power plants. They tend to be near water, like on the Ohio River or the lake, but people see pictures of them. They know there's big cooling towers. You know, this is distributed generation. You know, it could be on a house. It could be on a business, if it's on a, a business, uh, we did a study of top 25, a lot of them got two GM plants. One of them's got the whole roof covered. Uh, we have private corporations. And so visibility is critical, I think. And, you know, we've had several um, views here of the environmental impact. And I think, you know, lowering the carbon footprint. So, I mean, you know, some people said, well, you heard some of that today from people outside Ohio. Well, we don't consider Ohio to be economic. And, you know, I think we're demonstrating that it's working and there are big corporations, uh, even some big utilities now looking at it. And so we're trying to lead them into the right direction. And so a lot of what's happened in the last year or so is convincing people uh, in rural areas like co-ops uh, or in municipal uh, utilities, which tend often to be in less populated areas, um, that this works. And we see this all the time on our tour. But, you know, it, it needs to be accumulated and we need to learn from each other. So